We are happy to have the Reverend Mark A. Pollock of Whitehall Camp and Conference Center who will give the invocation. And then following the invocation, Central's Ken Molesky, Manager of Communications and Public Relations, will introduce our elected representatives. I want to welcome you tonight on behalf of Whitehall Campground. It's an honor and privilege for us to host this event every year. So would you agree with me in prayer this evening? God of all creation, we come before you today to give you honor and to give you praise. For you are worthy of our honor and our praise. You, O oh Lord, are the source of all that is good the source of all of our blessings. And we thank you for all that you have done and given to us. We thank you for the opportunity to come together this evening as we gather. We ask, Lord, for your hand of blessing upon this meeting. We ask that you would guide and direct this meeting so that it is full of wisdom and productivity and respect for one another. And Lord, I ask your blessing this evening upon each family that is represented here today. And also upon the, the employees of this co-op. And we ask, Lord, that you would put your hand of protection upon them. And you would give them your wisdom and your discernment as they deal with those that they serve on a daily basis. Thank you, Father, for helping them to accomplish their work and their goals this day and throughout the year. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It is my honor and privilege to introduce our elected officials in attendance this evening. When I announce your name, please stand. State Senator Scott Hutchison and his wife, Mary Beth. Scott serves the Point Burst Senatorial District that includes all of Clarion Forest and Venango counties, as well as parts of Butler and Warren counties. State Representative Donner Overlander, accompanied by Constituent Outreach Specialist Diane Porter and B. Fulton. <laughs> Representative Overlander serves District 63 covering Clarion and parts of Forest and Armstrong counties. State Representative R. Lee James, accompanied by his wife Maureen and staff including Scott, Kim Scott, Becky Hedlund, and Cindy Swenson. <laughs> Representative Jane serves all of Venango in parts of Butler counties. State Representative Brian Ellis. <laughs> Representative Ellis serves the 11th district in parts of Butler County. Also with us tonight, we have our Butler County Commissioners. They are Commissioner Leslie Moshi and Commissioner Kevin Kozen. Our Venango County Commissioner is Albert Chip Abramovic. Our Clarion County Commissioners are Commissioner Ted Theron, <laughs> Commissioner Ed Easley, and Commissioner Wayne Brocious. On behalf of our Board of Directors, staff, and members, we appreciate your continued support on issues important to our members. And now I would like to ask our board president, Jody Weaver, to call.
call our 81st annual meeting to order. Thank you, Ken. The agenda or order of business of the annual meeting of the members is in accordance with Article 3, Section 6 of the bylaws. Article 3, Section 4 of the bylaws of the cooperative specify that 150 members constitute a quorum. Members voting by mail or by electronic means, as well as members present at the meeting, shall be conducted for the purpose of establishing a quorum. Registration at this time shows there are 445 members registered. There being a quorum, we shall proceed with the meeting. At this time, the elections are closed. The selection of the 2018 Tellers Committee was handled through the May issue of Power Lines asking for volunteers. I would like to thank each one for accepting this important responsibility. And at this time, I would like to ask for a moment of silence for our tellers and members who have passed away this past year. Thank you. Now, would all volunteer tellers please take the two log ballot boxes to the tabulation area. Mr. Clint Mathern, Judge of Elections, will accompany you. Central Electric sent five high school juniors on a youth tour this June. These students spent a week in our nation's capital with over 1,800 other cooperative student representatives from across the country. They met with the local legislators, toured historic sites, and made many new friends. They are not in attendance this evening. Also, this year we awarded 10 Good Neighbor Scholarships to students who demonstrated their non-paid service commitment to school, community, and church. Many had to be back to school, except we have one here tonight, Abby Brockett. Abby? We are proud of all our young ambassadors. We would like to see more young members become involved with the cooperative and understand the cooperative difference. So I'd like to ask for your help and encouraging younger members, you know, to become involved with Central Electric. It is their cooperative and they are our future. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to introduce Central CEO and General Manager, Matt Boschel. Participation is a big part of the cooperative difference. Thank you to Central's own Stacy Bechtel for her moving rendition of the national anthem. And I want to thank all of you for joining in. I always love that when the crowd spontaneously does that. Thank you. Tonight I get to introduce our board of directors. Every year I tell you that you probably don't need introduction to be introduced to them because uh, excuse me, they're your neighbors and friends, and they've been active in the communities we serve for years. They represent our members diligently through their hard work on this board. We're fortunate to have a board with such a wide variety of experience in their personal and professional lives as they offer a unique perspective to the governance of our cooperative. The very length of service each of our board members has also adds to that value. Ken Edsel and I were just talking about that prior to the board meeting tonight. Our board members have from as little as four years to as many as 30 years with others spread in between. This allows for both new ideas and continuity on our board. Please join me in recognizing them and thanking for their service tonight. First off, you've already met Jody Weaver, our president, representing Clarion County. Ken Durant, vice president, representing Butler County. Althea Smith, our secretary treasurer, representing Venango County. Althea also represents our board on the 
Pennsylvania Rural Electric Association Board. William Eichner, representing Butler County. <laughs> Ken Etzel, representing Venango County. <laughs> Nancy Ledjack, representing Armstrong County. <laughs> Betty Walters, representing Forest County. <laughs> and finally, Rick Weaver, representing Clarion County. Rick also represents our board on the Allegheny Electric Cooperative Board as well. Also on stage with us this evening, although he's not, so also with us here this evening, because I have seen him, but he's not up here on stage, is our attorney Mike Sloat, CC's legal counsel. Over the years, many members have served on our board. Today, one former board director is here with us, and I'd like to take a moment and recognize her, March Terwilliger. during which Central, Central staff provides information about the cooperative and the electric utility industry. And the members uh, bring items for discussion as well. This is a great program. It affords me the opportunity to interact more directly with individual members on a regular basis. I'd like to thank this MAC for their two-year service, which began this year and concludes in December of 2019. Every year I, when I introduce the MAC, I make a point of saying that uh, this is one of my favorite committees, a lot of the other committees are board member committees, but this is one of my favorite committees because I do get a chance to spend individual time with a group of members that I may not otherwise get a chance to, and they, and they share a lot of great ideas. Uh, representing Armstrong County on the committee are Karen and David Conrad. From Butler County, we have Emily and Ryan, I'm going to screw up your last name, I'm sorry, Bortz, is that correct? Also from Butler County, Peter and Margot Parati. From Clarion County, Timothy and Sheila Hockman. Also from Clarion County, Mike and Mary Sloganhop. From Forest County, George Holland. Representing Fernando County on our committee, Fred and Chris, I'm going to screw this one up too, has been hide. Maybe I'm close? No? Okay. Uh, and then also from Fernando County, Tim and Dorothy Hurley. <laughs> and, rep and representing our seasonal members, Dan and Sandy Steinmiller. Thank you again for your participation on that committee, and I hope you're getting as much out of it as we get from you. Uh, also joining us and helping tonight, uh, I hope you interact with her out under our, under our tent tonight, Stephanie Okaneski from the Pennsylvania Rural Electric Association. She's here representing the Action Committee for Rural Electrification, also co-op owners for political action and co-op votes. Next part's in highlighted because I added to it. If you're if you're already a member of Co-op co Owners for Political Action, let me thank you for joining our efforts in recognizing the importance of our voice in Harrisburg. I think if nothing else, the representatives that decided to join us tonight illustrate how important that is. Um, but if you're not already a member of Co-op Owners for Political Action, what are you waiting for? Uh, it's never been more important for us to be heard and our issues to be represented. Whether you join the Action Committee or not, let me please ask you to vote. It doesn't matter for whom you vote, but to ensure rural Pennsylvania has a voice, we all need to exercise our, road, our, our right and vote. So there are two different options tonight. you got your co-op owners for political action and co-ops vote, but please get involved with both of them. They're very important. In the back of your program, you'll see sponsors listed that have helped to defray the cost of our meeting tonight. If you could take a quick look at those, and please help me and join me in thanking them. The next order of business is the very difficult reading of the notice of the meeting and proof of the due publication of mailing thereof by the Secretary and Treasurer of the Cooperative, Althea Smith. Being sworn on oath to posts and says 
that she is the duly elected, qualified, and acting secretary of Central Electric Cooperative Incorporated. There and after called the, called the cooperative that on the 20th day of July 2018, she caused to be mailed by Diamond Marketing Solutions to each member of the cooperative at his her address as it appears in the records of the cooperative a notice of the annual meeting of the members of the cooperative to be held August 24th, 2018 by depositing such notice with postage thereon prepaid address as aforesaid in the United States Post Office at Carroll Stream, Illinois, and that the attached is a true and correct copy of such notice of said meeting mailed as aforesaid.
I'm going to start with safety. Maybe. <laughs> Trust me, the next word that's going to pop up on the screen is going to be safe, that big bold word up there. It's appropriate that we're starting with safety because it's first, it's last, it's throughout everything that we do. Frankly, if we don't provide, if we don't work hard to provide our service safely, the rest of what we do doesn't mean a whole lot. Five years ago, we had an electric fatality accident here at Central Electric, and, and frankly, it, we are completely dedicated collectively as a group of employees to make sure that never happens again. Our safety programs uh, uh, evolved over the years. 81 years ago, as you can imagine, we were out there trying to get power to everybody who wanted it as quickly as we could, and we were working safely. But frankly, we didn't know a lot of the hazards that we know about today. So in 2017, we pulled safety out from one of our departments and put it into a single department by itself. It reports directly to my office. And the importance of doing that helped us prioritize safety where it belongs and give it the appropriate emphasis that it really needs. Our efforts in safety are, cover a wide range of things. First off, we, we make major investment in tools and equipment and personal protective equipment just so that our employees can work efficiently and safely. We train and we train and did I mention that we train? And we do a lot of that because we want to make sure our employees are aware of the hazards and how they might mitigate those hazards. So that becomes a very important part of what we do. Every year, we do, just as an example, every year we do pole top rescue training for our linemen. Hopefully we'll never have to use that again. Every year we do first aid and CPR training. Every year we train on OSHA 1910-269. Just a few of the things that we make sure we get done every year. We've established a cross-departmental safety committee. They review our processes, any incidents or accidents that we may have had, and they make recommendations to the company as a whole about ways that we can avoid incidents and accidents, and things that we might do to improve what we do. I'm particularly proud of this committee. They've done a really great job. They've really got established in 2017, and they've really done an excellent job of rec making recommendations for improvements in the company. Then we inspect, and we inspect. And did, I, did I mention that we inspect? Yeah, we do this because we inspect our system, we inspect our facilities, we inspect our people. We do this to find mistakes and correct them. We do this to make sure we're making continuous improvement, but we also do it to make sure we're always being safe. We use a lot of different people to do our inspections. It's not just the fox watching the headhouse. We bring in Federated Rural Electric, our, our insurance carrier, and they come six times a year to do unannounced inspections of our crews out in the field. We don't want them all prepared and only getting the spit and polish version of it. We want to make sure they're seeing what we do every day, so we do those inspections unannounced. Our own employees do inspections as well. We check out what we're doing, we look at our processes. We have outside contractors, some of you may have seen them all on the side of the road, Osmos. They do our pole inspections every year for us. In 2017, they inspected 7,500 of our poles to make sure they're sound and safe. We also have representatives from the uh, Rural Electric Safety Achievement Program join us this year. Every three years, I should explain what that is, we participate with NRECAs, that's our, natural, our national association. Every three years, we ask them to come in and they send a group of people that includes representatives from our statewide organization and other cooperatives across the state. And they come do a comprehensive on-site inspection of all of our facilities. They take a look at our facilities out in the field, they take a look at our workers in the field, they interview employees, they look at our processes, they look at our paperwork, they make sure that we are doing things as we should be. Now they're not an authority that comes in and tells us how to do things. We invite them in. We want them to take a look at what we're doing from a safety point of view so we make sure we're getting it right. They gave us a, they tell us things that we can do to improve, and they tell us things we're doing wonderfully. I'm very proud to report that that most recent inspection that we just got, which was two weeks ago, could not have been a better inspection. Our employees are working very safely on your behalf. 
our safety program does is it'll focus on personal engagement, personal responsibility, and personal accountability. A couple of months ago, I wrote an article, I, I know all of you religiously read it, but it was about safety being personal because it has to be. Company goals about zero lost time accidents and that kind of thing don't really carry a lot of weight with a person who's doing the work on a daily basis. So I asked all of our employees to write down one or two things that are so important to them, the things that they will not compromise what they do from a safety point of view for. We've been collecting those. In the article, I actually already asked all of you to participate as well. So consider this a second solicitation. On the back of your survey tonight, jot down your personal safety goal, that thing that you won't compromise for, and drop it off on the surveys. We'll put them to good use. The next area is reliable. Well, while I do have a, a whole bunch of really great information to provide you tonight, reliability is pretty much the elephant in the room. But how do we eat an elephant? If my son was here, he'd say, one bite at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight about those bites and what we're doing. In 2017, you experienced, on average, 17.64 hours of outage time per member. That is by far the worst outage time per member we've had since I've been here. Now, 48% of that outage time was a direct result of trees. 32.4% of that outage time was a direct result of a power supply interruption. 2018 has started equally difficult with regard to the weather conditions and whatnot that we've had. However, some of the efforts that we made in 2017 have started to show some, some fruit. We have about 100,000 hours less of outage time this year than we did at the same time last. That translates to about four hours per member. So we are, in fact, making some progress. That being said, the numbers aren't where we want them to be. As a matter of fact, the outages that you've experienced in 2018 so far have been 64% of the time have come from trees, and another 19% of the time from our power supply outages. So there we go. We've got two giant causes of outages, trees and power supply. <clears throat> So I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we're doing about this. First, since 2010, since trees are such a big concern, since 2010 we have more than doubled our budget for right-of-way clearing or tree trimming. We went from, and I don't want to tell you that's from $100 to $200, that's from just shy of $1.5 million in 2010 to this year over $3.1 million that we're expending for right-of-way clearing. In addition to that, we've got four different contractors that are out there working for us to maximize the number of feet on the street we have in order to take care of this tree problem. We put a much greater emphasis on following behind those contractors to make sure they're doing what we need them to do with our rights of way. We're trying to reclaim our rights of way. We've also made some changes to our design standards in our engineering area or to stiffen our system for storms. We've shortened our span length. We've put in taller and thicker poles. We've improved our sectionalizing so that when an outage does happen, we're able to decrease the number of members that are affected by that outage. We've also increased and improved our connections between our substations. So when that power supply issue happens, we're able to do some switching and pick up more of our members even if the power supply hasn't come back on. But speaking of power supply outages, we've been working with our Generation and Transmission Cooperative, Allegheny Electric, to hold them accountable for these power supply interruptions. This isn't the first time you've heard me talk about power supply interruptions. I've even written a couple of open letters to the membership about it. And But we've been working with them to hold them accountable and to start to work towards solutions of how they can better serve our members as well. Many, of outage causes, many causes of outages are outside of our control, so it becomes that much more important that the things that are in control are in control, we put more of our resources towards and spend more time talking about. All of these efforts are 
making a difference. I mentioned the 100,000 hours, and they reflect a very long-term investment in the reliability of our system. So let's pass by that elephant and move on to reasonable cost. We manage our resources, our financial resources, very well. Every year we get what's called a key ratio trend analysis. One of our lenders comes in and they provide us with 145 different categories in which they compare us to our peers across the country, about 800 or so co-ops across the country. What we found this year in that comparison is that we have some of the lowest power costs in the country. We also have some of the lowest cost per year for members in the country. We've also formalized our, plan, our financial planning process and really prioritized our goals. What's the highest financial priority for you as members? That's right, how much the bill costs, that's our rates, that's exactly right. Yes, our rates are our virtual priority goal. Our board was very clear in that area. But we have two things we follow with regard to rates. First, we want to make sure that we don't have a rate, we have a rate increase no more than at least every two years. So let's see how we're doing with that. Central's last rate increase was July 1st of 2016. We didn't have a rate increase in 2017. We are not going to have a rate increase in 2018. Absolutely. And I have one more piece of good news. We are not planning a rate increase for 2019 at this point. Yes. So, that two year window, we've exceeded that, and we're, we're doing our best to hold those rates steady. The other part of rates that we try to follow up on is we want to see how we compare to those that are, are around us. You might remember last year we want to beat them. You might remember last year I reported that uh, Penelec is actually behind us now. We, uh, we have a better rate than Penelec does by about 16%. We're still working, yeah, I know, thank you. Uh, we're still working to close the gap with West Bend, and we still trail that by about 11%. But with, with some of the issues they're having with reliability, I'm sure they're going to be asking for some rate increases pretty soon, so we're trying to hold our line. After we talk about rates, then we start looking at the rotation of patronage capital. Excuse me, there's a couple of different things we talk about there as well. Our first priority is trying to retire capital credits to our members every single year. This board is very committed to that subject. The reality is that's a big reason, that's one of the big parts of being a cooperative and a big, a big cooperative difference issue. I'm going to mention that later when I'm talking about the cooperative difference, so I'll get back to those numbers in just a minute. So, since I've been here, we have retired capital credits every single year. It looks like one year we didn't because we moved when we were doing it from December to April. And so we had one calendar year where we didn't, but we haven't skipped a cycle where we have retired capital credits. The other thing we do is we try to reduce the number of years of the rotation of the patronage capital. Basically, we're trying to decrease the, long, the length of time that we hold on to your money. When I got here about eight and a half years ago, we were at 28 years we were holding that money. The goal is to decrease that. This year, we're at 23 years as the rotation of patronage capital. And we have an ultimate goal of getting it down to 20 years for the rotation. So we're on track with that as well. The next section in the, the, in the um, financial planning is our equity. Our goal in equity is to incrementally, annually, increase your equity in our system. In 2010, at the end of the year, we were just under 31% equity. This year, 2017 at the end of the year, we are up to 34% equity. So we are meeting that goal. We have an ultimate goal of getting to 37%, and then once we're there, we're going to make a decision on where we're going from that. The last of our financial goals is a, a compliance piece. It's very simply to meet or exceed our loan covenants at an annual basis, and we historically do that every year. But next we get to move on to something a little bit more exciting than reasonable cost. We're going to talk about commitment to communities. Thank you, Steve. It's difficult to talk about commitment to communities when Central is so much a part of the community. It's 
not just committed to it. The employees here live and work and volunteer in the communities. Our membership makes up of the communities that we serve. But those are really the big picture items. I want to dig just a little bit deeper into some of the things we do to help support the community. We maintain relationships with our elected officials and, and leaders in the community. And this is evidenced by, if, if nothing else, evidenced by the sheer number of them that showed up tonight for our annual meeting. I want to thank them again for doing that, by the way. Thank you. I already gave my plug for your participation in co-op owners for political action and co-ops vote, but please, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it again, so please participate in those programs. They're very important, especially in rural Pennsylvania. How about LED light bulbs at no cost to you? By now, you should have received a packet in the mail with four LED light bulbs that were funded by Central Electric and your, and your Generation Transmission Cooperative or compliments of, I should say. In, in your gift bags tonight, you got a couple more of them. But I want to remind you, like the letter in it said, they don't save you any money if they're sitting on a shelf. You need to put them in and get started using them. It's very important. Because frankly, that's how they're paying for how we did that. We also get to use Nishjeet's dollars unclaimed property that the Commonwealth has allowed the cooperatives to keep so that we can directly benefit the communities we serve. We're able to put them back in a, 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 a myriad of ways. The first thing I want to mention you already heard about tonight. In 2017, we gave 10 $2,000 scholarships to students that were heading off to college. In 2018, we've done the same thing. We were also able to augment our participation in the Youth Tour Project. We sent five students instead of two because of that. We've also been able to make capital contributions to not-for-profit organizations within our service territory. And we've been able to implement an employee giving program that has helped 70 different organizations throughout, not-for-profit organizations throughout our service territory. And we're doing it again this year. But perhaps the most important one of all of these things that we do with DSG's dollars is the assistance for low-income energy folks. In 2017, we helped 153 families, and in 2018, we helped 225 families pay their electric bill. That all came through our family fund, and I want to emphasize, all of those programs that I just rattled off at no cost to our membership. We provided, we also participated, we are, our employees set up boards of chambers and economic development groups in Butler, Venango, and Clarion counties. We participate in community events, oh, like the Autumn Leaf Festival in Clarion and, and, and similar events. We provided a first responders training that police, fire, ambulance services, and, and others come to where we demonstrate both with a hotline demonstration and a classroom portion what the dangers are that they could expect to see when these dedicated people go out and actually show up at scenes before we're there. So we, we go through what's available to them and then we demonstrate how they can keep themselves safe. In 2017 and 2018 combined, we gave this presentation to nearly 100 first responders. We also have a safety town presentation. You probably saw it under our tent tonight, our safety village. We give this to students all over our district, all over our, uh, our territory, every year, and they show, it shows potential concerns that could happen, accidents that have actually happened to people. And it teaches kids how to be safe around electricity. Hundreds of students every single year see this program just from Central. And we're not the only ones that do that program, but it's a very important program. The last piece I want to talk about tonight is the cooperative difference. And I've always, I always mention that we're a private, not-for-profit electric utility company. That separates us from the rest, but there's some other things that separate as well, that, that cooperative difference, that one member, one vote. Just because someone has the means to have ten different accounts doesn't give them ten votes. Each of you has an equal voice in your cooperative. The local control that that provides, this 
group of people elects our member elected board of directors and collectively makes decisions for what this cooperative is going to do. I did promise I was going to mention the capital credits again because I save it for near the end because it's a big deal. In 2017 and 2018, respectively, we retired one point, over $1.6 million each year to our members through the Florida the Capital Credits. When I'm talking about a cooperative difference, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our employees. Jody, I asked you to thank them for all they did for putting tonight's event together, but I would like uh, this, this very talented and dedicated group of people. Uh, please join me in thanking them again for not just what they did tonight, but what they do all year long to make sure they're supporting the cooperative and our membership. And lastly, and certainly most importantly, is your membership. You are the cooperative difference. If the membership didn't exist, neither does the cooperative. So I really want to thank you for your participation in and support of your cooperative. And thank you very much for your time and attention this evening. Therefore, makes us less attractive 
for anybody that might be doing that. With that said, if there was a cyber attack on the bigger grid, we do get our supply from the larger grid. So if it was to shut down the entire grid, certainly Central would be impacted by that as well. <clears throat> so moving on. For those members who chose not to submit questions in advance, a microphone has been placed near the front of the auditorium, so all may hear your question. Each person, will, each person will have two minutes to ask any questions, and a response of equal time will be given. Do we have any questions from the floor tonight? I need you, I need you to come over to the microphone if, you're, if you need to ask a question.
we have devices in our system that I mentioned earlier, sectionalizing devices, and what they do is when there's a when there's a contact that creates a fault on our system, they open and give the opportunity for that fault to clear itself. And then they close back in. And they will do that multiple times before they go to what we call lockout and create an actual outage that stays for a period of time. So that's one of the things that could be happening there. Uh, we have that same issue with the people who provide our power. They have those devices that go through it as well. But if you're experiencing individually issues with regard to a lot of links, uh, because it's because it is very individual sometimes, your best bet's going to be to call into our office, ask the question, and we're going to be able to tell you we have information that can show you when that's been happening, and we can sometimes find out specifically what's causing it and take action to correct it as well. Thank you. You bet. Anyone else? Yep, I see somebody jumping up. ERC has decided not to do estimated time of restoration, even though the utilities, kind of like West Penn, all have to do it, and actually have very good numbers in doing it. And it's not a two hour, two hour, two hour, initially two hours, and after that it's based on the call, and they only have two shots to get it right. And it's uh, surprising in the 90% of the times they are very close on their numbers. So why is the... Uh, I certainly can't comment on that. How accurate they are. I certainly can, I can comment on how accurate they've been for me. I'm, I'm not a member of Central Electric. I actually have Penn Power, I'm one of the many versions that are thereof. And they, in one situation, were, uh, their estimate was quite a bit longer than the outage was, and in another situation, it was quite a bit shorter. Uh, anecdotally, I've been told by other employees that they've gotten that two hours, and then two hours, and then two hours. And in one case, it was 12 hours they did that two hours. Uh, as far as their actual accuracy, I couldn't possibly comment on that. I don't have that kind. Of, I don't have access to that kind of information. But until we're able to, the reason we've made this choice not to do it right now is we want to provide if the information we give you. We want to make sure it's as accurate as it can be. And I don't want to tell you that it's going to be. Oh, we've got somebody right there. If we've got somebody on scene and we know what's going on, then we can provide you with some information. But if we don't have anybody there, it, it's it is. It's silly to believe that anything I tell you would be have any valid basis at all. Until someone's been there to see what's going on, the person at the office that took the call has no idea what it is. So again, we are considering how to do this best, but the reason they've done it at these other utilities is because the PUC has required it of them, and the reality is they're not putting any significant effort into it. But that's the feedback that I've been given about it. I, if you have other information, that's I, I don't have. Well, they put a very big effort on, on getting it correct. Okay. And the numbers are, are quite quite a formula to figure out if they're correct or not. Okay. Well, that's that's not information I've had yet. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing anybody jumping to the mic this time, I'll go back to our next. We have uh, Attorney Mike Sloat, Central's legal counsel, who will explain the entire election. Excuse me, explain the election procedure.
invited the cooperative members of Armstrong County and Butler County to file to petition to run for these respective seats. The eligibility requirements for serving as a director of the cooperative are provided in the cooperative's bylaws and in the member handbook. The cooperative bylaws and member handbook can also be found at the cooperative's website at www.central.co. To ensure that the petitioning members are eligible, the board appoints members to a nominating committee. The nominating committee reviews the petitions to verify that the members that are petitioning are qualified in accordance with the cooperative's bylaws and the state regulations. Those that qualify are nominated and their names are placed on the ballots. The cooperative's bylaws also provide that incumbent directors are automatically nominated as long as they continue to meet the qualifications. At this time, I'd like to uh, recognize and thank the following members that served on the nominating committee. Harvey Luce, East Brady and Armstrong County. Joe Gibson, Parker, Butler County, James Reed, Freiburg, Clarion County, Randy Theron, Knox, Clarion County, Dennis Lamb, Tynesta, Forest County, Carl Gadsby, Grove City, Ron Peronick, Cranberry and Venango County. There was one qualifying candidate nominated to run for Armstrong County Director Seat, that's incumbent director Nancy Lindyak of East Brady. And uh, there was one qualifying uh, candidate to run for the Butler County seat that was the incumbent director William Eichner of Oak Claire. Uh, pursuant to the structure of the election process and the convenience of the mailing ballots, the nominations from the floor have been replaced by providing an option in the ballot to uh, provide for a write-in candidate. The ballots were mailed by the cooperative membership, permitting each member three options for voting. First option is by paper mail. The second option, second option would be online through the cooperative's website. And the third, you could have cast your ballot here tonight uh, before the beginning of the meeting. The mailed and online votes had to be received by no later than 4 p.m. yesterday. The paper ballots tonight were accepted up to the commencement of the meeting. The collection and tabulation of the mail and online ballots received prior to tonight's meeting was handled by an independent agency, Diamond Communication Solutions of St. Charles, Illinois. Diamond Communication Solutions reported those results to the judge of elections. Clint Matter has been appointed to serve the board for the judge of elections tonight. He is a certified public accountant. He has offices in Emlinton and Beadville. As the judge of elections, Mr. Madden is overseeing the teller's tabulation of the ballots that were cast tonight, as well as tabulation of those that were uh, mailed and received by Diamond Communication Solutions. We'd like to thank the following members and the volunteers that served in the telling committee. Jane Baker from Butler County, Robert Best, Clarion County, Charles Bickle, Venango County, Margaret Boyer, Butler County, Laura Gates, Clarion County, Beverly McAnallen, Clarion County, M. Dewey Rerick, Forest County. And the judge of elections will soon announce the results. Thank you.
If there is no further business or discussion, I declare the 81st Annual Meeting of Central Electric Cooperative adjourned. And now, and now prizes will be awarded under the direction of Cindy Cullen and Ken Molesky.